Good. So the Ten Commandments divide into two parts. Where did the Ten Commandments come from? Angela. Benedict. From Moses. Moses. And where did Moses get them? From God. God. Very good. You know where Moses was when he got them from God? Uh, I don't know. Was he in a valley? What? Was he in a valley? On a mountain, yes. Do you know the name of the mountain? Sinai. Mount Sinai. You got the Ten Commandments. And what were they written on? Uh, tablets. Sorry. Tablets of stone. So stone is hard, doesn't it? Stone doesn't change. So the Ten Commandments don't change. They're written there on stone, so you cannot edit them. You can't take a, a rubber and wipe out what's written on stone, can you? And change it and say, well, we'll make it differently. So the commandments are in stone. And there's three commandments on the first stone and seven commandments on the second stone. Why is it like that, Lily? Um, because the first three to do with God. The first three do with God, and the next seven do with? Your neighbor. Your neighbor. Very good. And what are the two great commandments? That our Lord made? No, that's the first commandment from Moses. Oh. Our Lord, in the life of our Lord, you learned that He gave us two new commandments. Maybe you didn't get that far yet. What were they? Love your neighbor. Um, love your enemies. No, not correctly love your enemies. Does anybody know? Alright, there were two commandments of charity, yes. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart, thy whole mind, thy whole will, and all of thy strength. Right? That's the first and the greatest commandment our Lord said. And the second commandment is like it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. As thyself. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as... Are you paying attention, Angela? Or are you watching Mr. Joyner run around? <laughs> Mr. Joyner's a distraction here. Okay, so... Uh, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as yourself. So the first commandment of our Lord, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt not have strange, no. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart, thy whole will, thy whole mind, thy whole strength, requires us to keep the first three commandments. And the one, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, requires us to keep the next seven commandments. So our Lord reduced them to two, based on charity, and so it's out of charity that we keep the commandments. So the third commandment, What's the third commandment? Remember to keep holy. Remember to keep holy, the Lord said. That one starts out different than the others. Do you know what remember means, Angela? What does remember mean? What's the opposite of remember? Remember means you must not forget. You must not forget. Yes, if you forget. Uh, you've done wrong. So this commandment is the one we can't say, well, I forgot. Because if you forgot, then uh, you <coughs> broke the commandment. This one says, remember to keep it holy. So if you say, well, I forgot it was Friday and I ate meat, well, that one, we don't have any commandments that says, remember not to eat meat on Friday. But we just have the commandment not to eat meat on Friday. So if you forget, you're kind of excused. But you're not excused from keeping the Sunday holy if you forget. So remember to keep the Sunday holy. Now when does Sunday start? Isaac. When Saturday finishes. That's exactly right. <laughs> Very good. When does it end? Uh, when Monday starts. That's right. Yeah. Sunday starts. That's right. That's right. Very good, Isaac. So that's when Sunday is. It starts when Saturday finishes, and it ends when Monday starts. And so it doesn't start when Mass starts and end when Mass ends. That's what some people think. They think, well, I got to Mass, Mass started, okay, Mass is over, I've kept Sunday holy. No, Sunday starts when Saturday ends, and it goes until Monday starts. So that's how long we have to keep holy, the whole day. So usually it starts when we get up on Sunday, and it ends when we go to bed on Sunday. That's when the Sunday uh, is that we have to keep holy. So we have to keep the whole day holy. Our Lord didn't just say, give me 
one hour. That's not what he said. He said, give me one day. Six days have you to do your own things. The seventh day belongs uh, to, to God. And that's what we have to try to remember. That seventh day belongs to God. So how do we keep it holy? Lily. What does the church demand of us? They put a mass and what else? No, we're not required to go to Holy Communion. What else, uh, Benedict? It's a commandment of the church. How many commandments of the church are there? No, there's ten commandments of God. Isaac. Six. Six. Seven. No, six is right. <laughs> the other part is we have to abstain from servile work. Abstain from servile work. What does abstain mean? You don't know. It means don't. That's the first part is right. You got it half right. All right. Don't. What does abstain mean, Isaac? Don't do it. That's right. If we abstinence means you don't do something. So on Fridays we abstain from eating meat. We don't eat meat. That's a day of abstinence, we say. So it means to stay away from doing stay away from that. And we have to stay away from servile work. What does servile mean? Benedict, you know? Jonah. Isaac. Hard work, yes, yes. That's not exactly right, though. I mean, sometimes uh, doing your uh, math homework might be hard, but that's not servile work. You can still do that on Sunday. Huh? What does servile work mean? Uh, easy work? No, it doesn't mean easy work. No, hard is more right than easy. Uh, Lily, do you know? All right, servile, the word servile comes from the word servus, which means a slave. So it's the work you would have a slave do if you had a slave. And you would say, well, you do that instead of me. That's what servile means originally, because sometimes people did have slaves. They had slaves in the time of Moses. People had slaves. So you tell the slave, uh, go do the dishes. You tell the slave, go... Uh, Clean the house instead of say go paint the house. So, servile work for us it means work that requires the use of the mind, the body more than the mind. So digging ditches, servile work. Working on the roads is servile work. Working on the farm is servile work. Work that requires the use of the body, the body more than the mind. Survival work. Yes. Can I ask a question? Why then is sport recreational sport encouraged or okay? Recreational sport is okay. That's different from professional sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Recreational sport, because uh, especially that's okay uh, for uh, people who sit around all week and the only time they get to take out, especially if the father goes out with the children and play sport with the children, that's a good thing to do, and so he gets a chance to be with the family on Sundays, so he can do recreational sport like that on Sunday because it, it's, a, it's a break from his ordinary work, if he's sitting at a computer all week today, and things like that that people, um, people do, they don't do servile work so much as their daily work anymore, so most people now don't do servile work, some still do, but uh, many don't, and so uh, that's why we can have a recreational sport for part of the day to keep the day holy. So the servile work is work that requires the use of the body more than the mind. That's what it is. Can you remember that, Angela? Do you know what the mind is? The mind is when you're in your head, that's when you think. So before you open your mouth to say something, you're supposed to think. What am I going to say? Well, I'll say Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace. Okay, so I thought that, and then I, I say it. And I think about what I'm saying. So that's the mind. 
the body is when you use your arms and your feet. So if you're, if you're uh, sweeping the floor, you're using your arms and your feet more than the mind. Mm -hmm. That's servile work. So abstain from servile work and to assist at Mass on Sunday. We're supposed to assist at Mass on Sunday. Not sleep during the Mass, but assist at the Mass, which means we're there with our body and our mind. And with our body, we, 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 are, we are dressed properly, dressed up for Sunday, our Sunday clothes. And uh, we kneel and we stand uh, and we sit with dignity and uh, try to uh, show that we're here to honor God. We're not here to go to the theater. We're not here to go to something else. We're here to honor God. And we have to participate by thinking about what is going on on the altar. So we're offering up sacrifice on the altar. So those are the two things that are required to avoid committing a mortal sin on a Sunday the church says is the minimum we have to do. So if you miss Mass on Sunday, is that a sin? Benedict? Yes, it is. If it's your own fault, right? To be a sin, it has to be your own fault. If there's no way to get to Mass, then there's no sin. But if we can reasonably get to Mass, then we're obliged to go to Mass or we commit a mortal sin. And if we do unnecessary... Is that Johnny? If we do unnecessary servile work on a Sunday... That's a mortal sin, so something that's not necessary. Now, necessary servile work is okay. So, for example, if you work in a restaurant and uh, people want to go out to dinner on Sunday so they don't have to cook themselves, so they can abstain from cooking and cleaning up, you can work in a restaurant. So, a restaurant can be open on a Sunday so that people don't have to, don't have to uh, 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 cook at their own houses. Or we can do dishes and we can cook on a Sunday because uh, on a Sunday we have to eat anyway. So those things are necessary uh, work. They're not servile work. They're necessary work on a Sunday. So those things we can do. But that's the minimum to avoid committing a mortal sin. If we do unnecessary servile work uh, or if we, uh, uh, so if we go, uh, you know, we're not supposed to wash our cars on a Sunday. If we wash our car on a Sunday, that would be wrong. Uh, if we do un unnecessary servile work, or if we don't go to Mass through our own fault, we commit a mortal sin. But still, we have to do more to keep the whole day holy. And so, we should do more on a Sunday than just that. So how else do we keep it holy? Well, if we don't have time during the week to study our catechism, we should study our catechism on Sundays. If it's a family, the father of the family should give catechism lessons on Sundays to uh, the children. And uh, we should have time with the family. It's time to visit, uh, do, do, do the works of mercy. What are the works of mercy? How many works of mercy are there? What types of works of mercy are there? Whew. Yeah, what types of works of mercy are there? Father, no, and that's a good question. Are you doing charitable work, helping others on a Sunday? Yes, those are works. Like things, obviously, yeah, that you don't want to do, but you're doing that out of charity. Yes. Now, and imagine even learning your faith. Is that what a mercy? That would be, yeah. Yeah. All right, so there's the corporal works of mercy and the spiritual works of mercy. The corporal works of mercy have to do with what? Mm. So? No. The body. The body. Corpus means body. All right. Corpus means body. Corporal works with the body. The spiritual works of mercy have to do with what, Isaac? The soul. The soul. The soul is a spirit, isn't it? So the spiritual works of mercy. So some of the works of mercy, you might have heard these: feed the hungry, clothe the naked, give shelter to the homeless, visit the imprisoned. So then you can visit people in nursing homes that are kind of like in prison. So if you have a relative in a nursing home, it's good to visit your, your, your relatives on a Sunday. That's a spiritual work. Just go visit your grandfather or your grandmother in a nursing home. If they're there, they're not home with you, visit them on a the Sunday. Visit the prison. Uh, take care of uh, the sick. So these are things that we should do on Sundays. Well, I know a man 
and he goes uh, to the nursing home on Sundays and, and helps him and feeds his sister because she needs somebody to feed her. So he feeds her on Sundays. And does that to him. That's something. That's a work of mercy. So that's a thing to do on a Sunday. You can't do them during the week. Spiritual works of mercy instruct the ignorant. What does ignorant mean? What does instruct mean? Teach. Teach. Very good. What does ignorant mean, Angela? <laughs> ignorant. That means you don't know. So instruct the ignorant, you tell them something they didn't know. Right? So that they, they're not ignorant anymore once they learn it. When they know it, then they're not ignorant. So an ignorant person is somebody that doesn't know something. So instructing or you find somebody that doesn't know the catechism and you teach them the catechism. That's to instruct the ignorant. And, and that's a very good work of mercy to do on a Sunday. And another work of mercy to do, so find somebody that doesn't know the catechism and teach them. Find somebody that doesn't know how to say the Hail Mary and teach them how to say the Hail Mary. That's instructing the ignorant. So anybody can instruct the ignorant. If you know something, you can instruct somebody else. Right? Instruct the ignorant. Uh, uh, admonish the sinner. That's a word. That's a harder one. What does admonish mean? Admonish means to warn, or to say, "Look, you're doing something wrong." So if you see somebody sinning, you can admonish them. That's a hard thing to do because you have to do it with tact, and with because uh, often the sinner doesn't want to be admonished. So. Uh, Look, this is wrong. That's an offense against God. That's a work of mercy. It's a work of mercy. And sometimes we have to do that. Parents have to do that for their children. When our children are doing something wrong, godparents have to do it for their godchildren. They have to say, well, you're my godchild. I have to tell you uh, this is wrong what you're doing, and you've got to stop doing it. So that's to admonish the sinner. Those are works of mercy. So those are other things we can do on Sundays to keep the Sundays holy. Want to try and keep the whole day holy. Remember, the whole day belongs to God. That's why if the father doesn't have much time to spend with his family and during the week, he can spend time with his family on the Sundays and see how his children are doing, see if they're uh, learning what they're supposed to be uh, learning, things like this. So that's the third commandment. Remember to keep holy the Lord's day. So Jonah, what's the first commandment? I am. Angela, what's the second commandment? Thou shall. Benedict. Thou shall not say the Lord thy name. That's right. What does vain mean? Do you know? Um, vain. Isaac, what does vain mean? Is that like a weather vane? It's fun. What does vain mean? You look in the mirror too much? <laughs> uh, yes, that's vanity, yes. That's your vanity. Yes, vain, yes, you look in the mirror too much. What does vain mean in the commandment, uh, Lily? Um, with disrespect? Not exactly with disrespect, but that's close, yes. It means without purpose. Without good purpose. So if you're not saying it to honor God or to uh, give glory to your neighbor, then we're not supposed to say it. We're supposed to say it's good purpose. So vain, 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 something's vain if it doesn't have any real purpose, like looking in the mirror too much. That's, that's vain because there's no, it doesn't, uh, doesn't do you any good. It doesn't make you holier. Uh, it makes you worse, actually. That's, that's, that's vanity. So that's why that's called vanity, because it doesn't, it doesn't make you better. Because it take vain. So what's the third commandment? The one we've just been talking about. Yes, remember. Did you know that, Angela? All right, Angela, repeat after me. Remember to keep holy the Lord's Day. Now, which day is the Lord's Day? Sunday is the Lord's Day. Now, what was on the stone commandment that Moses got? Isaac. Keep holding the Sabbath day. Which day is the Sabbath day? Saturday. Benedict. Sunday. 
Saturday is the Sabbath day. So the commandment for the Old Testament was to keep holy the Sabbath day, which was the Saturday. Why was it the Sabbath day, Lily? Does anybody know? Um, because nah. All right, because it took God six days to create everything. On the seventh day, He rested. So that's why we have a week. That's why the week is seven days. Because it took God in the beginning. It took Him six days to make everything. Who did He make on the sixth day? Uh, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve on the sixth day. So on the sixth day, and then the seventh day, He rested. So the seventh day became the day of rest. So that was the day, the Sabbath day was the seventh day. That was in the Old Testament. Now the church changed it to the Sunday from the Sabbath day. They changed it to the Sunday for several reasons. You know any of the reasons? Really? Our Lord rose from the dead on the Sunday. What else happened on Sunday? Jonah. No? Pentecost, somebody said. The Holy Ghost came on the apostles on a Sunday. So that's that's one reason they changed it to Sunday. That was the beginning of the church. And the beginning of the resurrection was Sunday, so the church changed to Sunday. The other reason is to make it distinguish from the Jews. So we had a different day than they had. So that was now we were now no longer of the faith of the Old Testament. It was a new covenant, a new agreement with God. And in the new agreement, we keep the Sunday holy. The Old Testament, the Old Covenant kept the Saturday we keep the Sunday. So to change and show that there was a distinction between us and the Jews. We changed it to the Sunday. So who changed it? The Apostles. The Apostles changed it from Saturday to Sunday. So all these religions that keep the Sunday and say they only believe what's in the Bible, well, they're not believing what's in the Bible because it's the church that made the Sunday. It doesn't say in the Bible that the Sunday goes says in the Bible that the Sabbath goes. They're not really Bible Christians. They say soul is for up, but they keep the Sunday holy. So those are the first three commandments. And if we love God with our whole heart, Isaac, our whole mind, our whole will, and all our strength, we'll want to keep those three commandments, won't we? So we've got to keep them well. That's what we've got to try and do. Say, what does God want from me? He wants me to honor his name. He wants me to honor him above all things, and he wants me to uh, 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 to keep holy his day. So those are the first three commandments. What's the fourth commandment? Jonah. Honor thy father and thy mother. So the next seven commandments, we're not going to look at them right now, the next seven commandments have to do with whom? Your neighbor. Your neighbor. Your neighbor. And so who is your most important neighbor? God. Oh, God's your God. Lily. Um, your father and mother. Yes, so that's why that comes first. And then, what's most important to your neighbor? What's the most important thing to him? His life is important to him. That's why the next commandment, thou shalt not kill. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not take away his life. Mm -hmm. After his life, what's most important to him? His, his, his wife. Mm -hmm. That's why you have thou shalt not commit adultery is the sixth commandment. So they're in order. After his wife, what's important? That's right, his car, his house, his yeah. things. Yeah, that's, so that's the seventh commandment, thou shalt not steal. See? And it, what's the next commandment? What's important? Some, for some people, this is more important than their things, actually. <laughs> their good reputation. The reputation that people think well of them. You don't want people thinking evil of you. So your reputation. So what's the eighth commandment? 
Thou shalt not bear false witness against anyone. What does bear mean? Carry. Carry, very good. All right. And what's then? Now the next two commandments have to do with what? Nine and ten. What's the ninth commandment? Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. That's the tenth commandment. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Right. What does covet mean? Mm. I don't know. Isaac. Put something over something. No. That's cover. <laughs> cover. You put something over something. This is covet with a T. Covet with a T, not an R. Alright, so covet means... Like, um, like steal? No, that's the seventh commandment, thou shalt not steal. This is, in, this commandment is like steal. Like marry? You could say like, like steal, yes, because it's not stealing, alright? But it's like stealing. And because it, you want it in a way that, that you, you, sh you cannot have it. You don't want to get it honestly. You want it in a way you can't have. You want something you can't have. So you can't have, so it's just an internal sin. It's just a sin that's internal. You don't do anything. You don't take it. You don't take it, but you desire it in the wrong way. So your neighbor's wife, you can't have her. So if you're desiring her, just that's coveting. Your neighbor's car, you can't have it. So you look at John Jude out there, and he's really fancy, he's like, oh, it's all fixed up nice, I wish that was mine. Mm -hmm. And, and you're thinking about it, and you're thinking about it, and you want to have it, and you want to have it, but you don't want to go out and earn it and say, John, show me how to make a nice shoot like that. You just want to have it without it out to work and without getting the money to buy it, and you'd really like to take it. But you, you know you can't take it because John's bigger than you, and you have to be in trouble. So you don't take it, but you're really thinking about it all the time. I'm thinking how I'd like to have that, I'd like to drive away in that, and uh, you don't actually do anything. Hey, well, one guilty one in this, I found the one in the middle, he said, can I have that, Mr. Reggie, are you going to die? I can take that one, can I? Oh, so that's it, that's comedy. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. All right, so that's exactly right. So that's what we can't do. So those are the ninth and 10th commandments. So we'll look at all those in detail uh, next time. All right, so we'll stop now and say a prayer. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, now, and shall be forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.